Earlier here, we were looking at the Earth. And we, we worked out that we'd have to get 36,000 kilometers over here before we could really get out of the grips of gravity. So what we want to try and do is build a building 36,000 kilometers high. And we already worked out that we'd need something with a very high strength to weight ratio. So let's see how all the materials that we've so far come across do on that rating. Oh, <laughs> are you still got your common sense turned on? That is a very silly material. All right, now this is a, is a sort of scale model of the Burj Khalifa. So this is the tallest building in the world, scaled down. So it's 0.8 kilometers high. So half a mile high. Now, if we were to build a building out of steel, right, so pure steel, solid steel, and just keep going up 100, 100 meters at the bottom, and just keep going up, we'd get up to four kilometers high. So we could, at the moment, build a building four kilometers high, no problem at all. If we use concrete, we'd get up to 4.7 kilometers high. That's incredible. 4.7. I mean, it's just insane, isn't it? And it really makes the current buildings that we're living in look just puny. And actually, you probably know this, but actually modern buildings are often built with a combination of steel and concrete. So if you do the calculations, you could probably get up to five kilometers with a combination of these two materials. So five kilometers high for these materials that we kind of know about. What about carbon fiber? What about this fantastic material with strength to weight ratio that's much better? Well, let's see. It's, it's actually extremely high. It's really impressively high. We actually have to go higher and higher, <laughs> higher than the steel, higher than the concrete, higher than a combination of steel and concrete, and even higher and higher and higher to seven kilometers. So we could build a building seven kilometers high with carbon fiber composite, a material that's really light but strong. And the, and the advantage of that is that there isn't this huge mass bearing down on it because it's so light. And yes, it's really strong, so it can really withstand a lot of its own weight. And the other brilliant thing is the view is fantastic up here. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. <laughs> Seven kilometers is really impressive. And let's say we could really make some advances we could get to maybe 10 kilometers if we increased be better the design. Maybe we could get to 100 kilometers in the next century or so. It still wouldn't be anywhere near 36,000 kilometers, which we'd need to build ourselves off the planet. And that's what we want to do, right? That seems like a really great thing to do. And yet, hmm. So is there another way to think about this problem? Yes. Crikey. Well, but yeah, you're right. I mean, I can see your point that you're trying to make with that. <laughs> because spiders, they don't build up. They've got more sense than that. They build down. They go up to the top, and then they come down on a little fiber. So that's, that gives me an idea. Why can't we do the same thing with this problem? Let's just turn the whole thing upside down, and let's not build up. Let's build down, or not build, let's send a cable down. So if I'm here orbiting the Earth as a satellite, OK, and that, then I get a cable, and I send it down to Earth like this, and I just, and I keep sending it down. And I, I keep going, and I keep going, and I keep going, and I keep going, and I keep going for 36. 36,000 kilometers. <laughs> and then when we get to the bottom, what we do is we tie it off. I know that sounds ridiculous, but yeah, just go with me on this one. We tie it off, and now we've got a cable from a satellite orbiting the Earth to the Earth's surface. Now, attach an elevator to that, and what do you have? But you have a space elevator. And we could just get into it and go up to space. How fantastic would that be? That would just be brilliant. Um, now, the thing is, of course, when you're paying a cable down, it, it, uh, there's huge gravitational forces pulling it to Earth. 
because it has an enormous weight of this cable. So you, again, you need something with very high strength to weight ratio, wouldn't you? So how, how strong does it have to be? And if you do the calculations, it turns out that you need something that would be as strong that if you had a one millimeter thick fiber of it, so not something, something a bit like a thread, it would have to suspend the whole audience, which is 20 tons. So that seems like quite a big task. Well, I've been thinking about this, and we, we do have fibers that are very strong, don't we? Um, as a scientist, uh, it's a very competitive field. And often, I get the feeling that people want to take a bit of a pop shot at me. So like a lot of other scientists worried about this, I have a body double. And occasionally, I send the body double to conferences instead of me just to see what happens. And the other week, this is what happened. I knew it. I knew they were after me. But luckily, they mistook my body double for me. And here he is. He survived. <laughs> now, the reason he survived, and it's not really him, because he's obviously plastic. I know that. <laughs> But he's got one of my shirts on, and I'm very, I didn't want him to get, didn't want to get her, that hurt. So I put on a Kevlar bulletproof vest. And you can see that the bullets, they went in here. We've just taken that bit off there, and in through here. But they didn't make it through the Kevlar. So these bits on the outside, these are sort of nylon, sort of just outer layers. Inside there is the Kevlar. Now, Kevlar is an extremely strong fiber. I'm going to show you where the Kevlar is. It's in here. That's Kevlar. It's an extremely fine weave, an extremely strong fiber. So what is Kevlar? It's a set of molecules that have been assembled molecule by molecule at the atomic scale. And so its strength really is very close to the atomic strength of those molecules together. And that, so you're breaking atomic bonds to break this material. And that, and that means that it's extremely strong. Is it strong enough, though, to build the cable for the space elevator? And it turns out to be not. Right? It, would only, it would only support a couple of people, a thickness of that, of that fiber. So although Kevlar is fantastic for saving lives, and it really is the material of choice, it isn't good enough for what we want it to do. That's a bit of a problem. But recently, there's been some material science discoveries that have kind of given us hope. And it turns out that the ingredients for this material that's given us hope, you've experienced yourself at every birthday you've ever had. And I just want to ask, is there anyone here whose birthday is this week? It's your birthday this week? All right, Can you, would you mind coming down? You... Hello, what's your name? Catherine. Catherine, and it's your birthday this week, is it? What do you have on your birthday? A cake, fantastic, here we go. Birthday cake for you for next Monday. Now, would you believe that the, uh, uh, the ingredients for a great new material are here? Where are they, though? Are they in the cake, the icing, the ribbon, the wax? Well, let me just take a sample of it. And now you can blow out the candles if you like. <laughs> Happy birthday. So on this glass slide, I've collected some of the ingredients for this material. And it turns out that until 10 or 20 years ago, we thought that there were only two forms of carbon. There was diamond, which is super hard and translucent. And there was graphite, which you use in pencils. And we thought that was it. And then people started looking around and realized that actually carbon could arrange itself in some other amazing ways. And one of them you've, we found in the soot of candles, which is an incredible place to find it. So here, in here, are molecules that look like this. And they're called buckyballs. And they're a different way of arranging carbon. And they're really beautiful things. And if you use these and you recombine them, you can make things like this. And these are called carbon nanotubes. And this is a fantastically strong and light material. The reason is this. You've got, it's mostly carbon. Well, it's only carbon, isn't it? <laughs> it's carbon. 
Now, carbon's a really light element. It's one of the lightest elements of the periodic table. So, so you, your ingredients are really light. The bonds between them are really strong. This is a really strong structure here. And then in the middle, there's nothing. So there's even less density, right? So these things are really, you, you know, you all know what it's like when you have a piece of paper and you, it waves about. And then you wrap it into a column, and suddenly it's strong and stiff. You've got the same thing going on here. So at a molecular level, this thing is an extraordinarily strong structure. In fact, it is theoretically, right, when you do the calculations, you do the quantum mechanics calculations, you find that this has the strength we need to make a space elevator cable. But of course, they're, they're, they're tiny things. Let me show you how small they are. Well, I can't really show you how small they are, <laughs> because all I can show is a jar of them. and you know, they're individual little nanoscales. I mean, this is at the scale of one billionth. So they're a billion times smaller than this. So the big challenge is then to join these up to, into one long thread. And that's really difficult. Then to get those threads into a twine and then into a cable, right? So if you're, if you're familiar with suspension bridges, you've got small bits of steel into a twine, bigger bits of steel, bigger, 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 all wrapped around. So that's a cable. So let me tell you how far material scientists have got. They can make nanotubes. So they can do that. And here is some of the first ever in the world examples of threads made with nanotubes. And this really is an amazing sample. This is made in the Windle Lab in Cambridge. And it really is the idea. It is these joined together in a thread. Now let me show you under the microscope. This is an incredibly exciting moment for everyone because we've been all hoping that this material could be made. And this is really the jump between theory, so the theoretical material science, to the practical material science, and then to the engineering. It, you know, at the moment, it's not there yet, but it's going to happen. People are going to get better and better at making this into that material. And when they do, we're going to have a material that can make a space elevator.